right. <laughs> it was early in the summer of 1894. There we go. On this particular evening, my accomplice friend, Mr. Sherlock Holmes, was out of the apartment at 221B Baker Street investigating for an important case. As he was going in disguise, he suggested that I not come along on this evening's events. Unfortunately. Thus, I stayed home and continued documenting some of our most singular cases. Mrs. the Hudson, our beloved landlady, has again graciously volunteered to take dictation as I recanted our... Yes, Mr. Hudson. Where's Mr. Oates? As I just explained, Mrs. the Hudson, he is on a very important case. Oh, okay. I recall a famous case that Mr. Holmes and I were called in on a few years back. Doc? Yes, Mrs. the Hudson. Why didn't Mr. Holmes ask you to come along with him? Because Mr. Hudson needed to go in disguise, and I would give him away. Ah, oh, okay. As I was dictating our previous exploits, there came a sudden knock at our chamber door. Doc? I don't think that was a knock. It sounded awful lot like a doorbell. It's funny because we don't have a doorbell. Thank you, Mrs. Hudson. I said there came a sudden knock on our chamber door. Uh, no. Wait. I said there came a sudden knock on our chamber door. Yep, yep, that's better. Come in. Why, welcome, Inspector. Hello. I am. Inspector Lestrade. And your service. Oh, good evening, Miss Tudson. How may we help you, Inspector? I would love to tell you, but the <laughs> script isn't telling me what I should tell. Oh, that's <laughs> worse. I, I know that. I, I understand that feeling. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. Almost. <laughs> I would, I would assume that you're looking for Mr. Holmes. That I'm getting all okay, right. So yes, Doctor Watson, I am looking for Mr. Holmes. You have no thought. All right. So um, he's not actually out in case right now, and, and he'll be back. Uh, but he, he's not here right now. Uh huh. Well, that is uh, interesting. Could you give him a uh, message for me? Why, well, certainly, Inspector. What's the message? Well. <clears throat> Scotland Yard has recently discovered evidence that a very dangerous criminal, in fact an arch enemy of Mr. Holmes, has returned to England and is believed to be in London. Mr. Holmes may want to use extra precaution until we capture this villain. This? Oh, what's his name, Inspector? His name is... Professor James Moriarty. Did you say Professor James Moriarty? Why, yes. I did say Professor James Moriarty. All right, Inspector. I will tell Mr. Holmes that he may want to stay on the lookout for Professor James Moriarty. Thank you, Doctor. And uh, may you two have a good evening. Good evening, Inspector. Evening, Inspector. Judge, as I was about to return to dictation of Sherlock Holmes stories to Mrs. the Hudson, there came another knock at the door at the 221B apartment. Oh, Mrs. the Hudson, we need to get that fixed. I said there came another knock, knock, a knock, all right, a knock at the door at 221B apartment. Knock. It's a knock, all right. Uh, come in. There you are, come in. Oh. I'm looking for Mr. Sherlock Holmes. 
Well, he's not here right now, but I'm his faithful companion, Dr. Caleb Watson. And this is our landlady, Mies Hudson. How may I help you? Help? Yes, I need help. The police are after me. And what's worse, I'm guilty. They may come and arrest me at any minute. Whoa, whoa, all right, have a seat. Slow down. Let's start this over, all right? Give us your name and tell us your issue. My name is Humphrey Bogart. I am an ordinary person, but I have a major addiction. Uh, an addiction? Uh, that means you are an addict. Uh, and what, Frank Tale, are you addicted to, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, I might as well tell. They're coming to get me anyways. I just know it. Anyways, I am addicted to donuts. Wait, to donuts? To donuts? To donuts? You're addicted to donuts? That's spelled D-O-N-U-T or D-O-N-D-O-U-G-H-N-U-T. I think it's D-O-N-U-T. Oh. So why do the police are after you for a donut addiction? Isn't it obvious? Because I'm an addict. I can't get enough donuts. And any time I go to the donut shop, they're always there. They are watching me. Wait, who's watching you? Who do you think? The police. There are always two or three policemen in the donut shop any time I go in. They watch to see how many donuts I buy. I know they're just getting enough evidence to arrest me. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but someday, and for the rest of my life. How can I ever get rid of this addiction? You know, Mr. Bogart, what you're talking about is called sin. All of us deal with sin in our lives. No one is perfect, but we should all be aiming to give those things in our lives over to Jesus to fix. What? Even Mrs. Hudson over at Mrs. Hudson, I'm sorry, and here and myself deal with sin in our lives. Even Mrs. Hudson deals with sin? No, it, it's sin. Anyway, S sin, like, like, what? Well, yes, even Mrs. Hudson deals with gossip every day with her friends. Ow, gossip. I don't mean to be rude, Mrs. Hudson. But you and your friends are no gossipers. Are not. Are two. Are not. Are two. Are not. Are two. <laughs> well, just for all that, you can dictate your story this evening without me. I'm gonna go call my friends. Yeah. Wait, I can't hold a pencil. I have pause. I'm sorry. Okay. I guess that means no bacon cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> Oh well, so much for late night snacks. Oh, now where was I? Uh, oh yeah, even Miss Mr. Holmes deals with sin. Even Mr. Holmes deals with sin? Yeah, yeah, that. I find that hard to believe. Does that mean there is no way to change? No, it doesn't mean we can't change. But there is really only one way to truly change. This way to change? Oh, please, please tell me how to change. Well, why don't I tell you the story of how my famous friend, Mr. Sherlock Holmes, changed from being a nasty, mean, non-caring private detective to one of the most loving and caring consulting detectives in the world. That sounds intriguing. Please, continue. Oh, all right. Well, the year was 1879. My friend, Mr. Holmes, had followed a notorious bank robber to an out-of-the-way place called Casablanca. Suspecting this bandit to strike. Sure enough, the robber at Mr. Senor Ugante robbed Loke Bank and ran with his stolen cash into a local club known as Rick's Cafe. He had only been at Rick's Cafe for a short time when he was shot and killed by the local police. But the police didn't find the stolen money. That's when they called in Mr. Holmes to find that stolen money. It had to be in the club someplace, but no one knew who had taken the money. 